Hi, welcome, Katie. And uh, I'd like to start the interview by just asking you to describe um, Art UK and, and the sculpture project that you did. Right. Hi, Peter. It's nice to meet you. And uh, I'm Katie Goodwin from Art UK, Deputy Director of Art UK. So Art UK is a charity. Um, we work right across the UK. Our main mission is to make art available that's in public collections across the UK, um, public art as well. And we do this to um, create better access for people. Um, people can look at artworks that are in store that they might not normally see on display. Um, they can interact with the website, the Art UK website, by making their own curations. They can tag artworks. Um, it's for learning, enjoyment, research. Uh, we have about 4.8 million unique users to Art UK in the last 12 months, about half from the UK and then half from overseas. Um, and the, the, we've got about 300,000 artworks that you can search. You can browse on Art UK by over 50,000 artists in over 3,000 collections across the UK. Uh, the majority are oil paintings, um, but there's also a large number of sculptures, um, which we added as part of our sculpture project. And then there's a growing number of artworks in other media like uh, watercolours, prints, drawings, some textiles, a few ceramics that sort of thing. So the Art UK Sculpture Project, it was a four-year programme to digitise uh, sculpture across the UK. A lot of that was in collections, but we also digitised public sculpture uh, through a, a network of volunteers who helped us with the recording and, and photographing those. We also did then running alongside that a large learning and engagement programme. Um, we engaged with over 23,000 people um, in person and we took sculptures into schools. We work with community groups. We made films with young people in schools. We made audio descriptions about sculpture and a large number of those people who interacted uh, in person were, were under 18. So that was really great as well. Amazing. And uh, so you, you, you won a prize. The, the, you impressed the Apollo jury. Uh, what do you think were the qualities or innovations that, that, that resonated with them? I think they, they were impressed by the scale of what we'd done. Um, several um, projects had existed in the past to record sculptures, especially public sculptures, but nobody had really brought it together um, like we had before. So definitely the scale of it, that it was a very large digitisation programme right across the UK. Um, they were interested in the fact that we had not just highlighted those sculptors that people already knew about, people like Barbara Hepworth and uh, Henry Moore that were more sort of household names, but we also um, highlighted those lesser known artists around the, the country or from different parts of the world who've got sculptures in collections in the UK or might have uh, created public sculptures. And the other thing was um, it actually turned out to be quite a timely project in terms of that recording and uh, bringing this national collection together. Because over the last few years, there's obviously been a lot of conversations about public sculpture, especially, and about who we commemorate, um, what um, events have been commemorated across the UK. There's been debates around what should be removed or what should be moved to other places. So having this big catalogue together, it, it does sort of bring it all together and it, it provides an opportunity to really think about what's out there around the UK. What does it mean? What are the different regional variations? And um, it also highlights how things have changed over the last few years with more sculptures dedicated to women, for example, uh, more sculptures dedicated to different events like uh, Windrush generation, more people from different diverse backgrounds. So it's, that was really interesting. So I think those were the main reasons that they chose this project to win the uh, Digital Innovation Award. Fantastic. Thank you. And, and what sort of challenges or unexpected kind of positive experiences uh, did you have during the realisation of the project? Well, the, the biggest challenge is the scale of the project, as I've just been saying, um, the fact that we do work right across the UK. So England, Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, also the Channel Islands and the Isle of Man. So it's, it's a big area. Um, so 
the, the way that we dealt with that challenge is like you do with any big project is you break it down into chunks, into smaller project areas. So for the work we did with collections, we broke the country up into different project areas. We had staff on the ground working directly with those collections to gather the data from them to um, set up the photography um, days, that sort of thing. And it was similar with the public sculpture Um one challenge was we had to set up a volunteer program from scratch. We'd never had a volunteering program on this scale before. Um, so we had to set that up. We had to recruit people. A lot of them came to us from the Royal Photographic Society, who were a partner. Um, and then about 500 volunteers contributed thousands of hours of time over, over the period of the project. So they all had to be trained as well. They were given guidance, managed, making sure that their images were consistent, that they were a good enough quality to go on the website. So lots and lots of logistics, lots of checking of images, checking of data so that it could all be pulled together to go onto the website. So yeah, that was the biggest challenge is just that scale of trying to pull all that information together across the country. Um, but obviously, in terms of positives, there's lots of different positives. We absolutely love doing the learning and engagement program. Got wonderful feedback from that, working with lots of young people. And a lot of that can be seen on the website in the films that you can you can watch on the site, learning resources, that sort of thing. Um, there was the positives of working with the volunteer team who really enjoyed contributing to the project, um, uh, being part of a bigger project and learning new skills or developing skills they already had. And uh, again, as I was saying before, it's that uh, pulling all that information together and then being able to use that information to um, uh, find out about artworks and people that we didn't normally know about and be able to use them for statistical analysis of what's out there and, and how many artworks there are of women compared to men. And, and that sort of thing was just really fascinating when you've got that, that big group of material that you can then um, analyse. Yes, yes, that's really interesting, actually. So uh, an awful lot of data must have been involved in that. And it's, did some of it come from other sources like museums or other collections? Exactly. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So working directly with those organisations that um, hold the sculptures, we obviously work directly with them to to pull that data together. Um, for public sculpture, um, we did some research ourselves, but we also relied on existing information from another partner who were the Public Monuments and Sculpture Association, who'd done quite a lot of research in about half of the UK. They've done some quite comprehensive cataloguing over the years. So it's pulling that information together, more recent information for those areas that had already been catalogued, and then having to do that research about those areas that ha perhaps hadn't been looked at as closely before. And then all the data has to be consistent across Art UK because if people are coming to the website, they want to, they might be looking at an artwork um, in Aberdeen, for example, and they want to make sure that the information is presented in the same way. If you're then looking at an artwork that's in Cardiff, you want that all to be consistent. So all the field names had to be consistent and how the different words were presented and uh, that type of thing, dates, that type of thing on the website. So that's obviously quite a big job, lots of checking, lots of um, before it then went, it uh, was uploaded onto the website. Right. Yeah, yes. That that seems like a an enormous scale uh, yeah. of operation, as, as long with everything else that you've been telling us about. So yeah. So um, obviously, with uh, public art or sculpture that is out in the open, there's a strong place link. Um, how does that work with a digital project such as this? Yeah, so um, you're absolutely right that, that a lot of the sculptures that we see every day, they are often very closely linked to their local environment. They might be reflecting um, industries or different um, work that's very prevalent in a certain area like fishing or steel, pottery making, that sort of thing. So obviously in terms of you can look at that on Art UK and you can pull out ones and look at different areas on Art UK. We've obviously got a map function. So you could look specifically at a certain area and see what sculptures are there. So Art UK is quite useful if people want to plan visits, for example, if they're going to a certain area and want to see 
what artworks are there in in that area that they could might be able to go and visit and they've got the picture there of what it will look like and where it is um, mapped on the website. Um, but we can pull out that information by writing stories, for example. We write articles for the website that are interpretation about artworks across the uh, the Art UK catalogue. So that's one way that we can sort of pull that together into information about what's in certain areas of the UK. Um, and then another way that we work in person and sort of on the ground is that through that learning and engagement program. So when we've worked with schools, when we've worked with community groups, that's usually is focusing on a certain area, on a certain um, collection or, or some certain public sculpture. So again, that links it back to that place and you've got that um, direct interaction between people and the objects. And that's been things like taking up artworks into schools from a local collection. So that's got that local um, focus or um, we've done some activities where we've been um, working with young people to show them how to record sculptures in their local area, public sculptures, how that's done, that type of thing. So yeah, place is very important, even though you've got this national database. If you drill down, you then find all these local connections and, uh, and, and artworks that are very deeply rooted in in the place where they're located. Thank you. That, that that's really interesting. And um so the the that you work with volunteers to uh create the database to capture the material and and I I see from the site that it's also opportunities for people to add more information, to do tagging, things like that. Yes. How do those work together? So um, our volunteer program, um, we work with with the sculpture project and we still have volunteers who do um, go out and take photos of sculptures for us. And then we're hoping to do some more with murals as we go forward. We're looking for funding for that at the moment. So they have got quite a specific role that they've signed up to. They have training, they're managed directly. We know who they are, um, they're, they're named people. So with tagging, tagging is a, a, a crowdsourcing sourcing tool. So this is a way that people anywhere in the world can get involved with contributing to Art UK, with helping to make artworks more findable, uh, more discoverable by people. So anybody can sign up to do it for free and they can um, look at artworks, add the keywords to that artwork. So it might be, for example, if it's a painting and there are lots of different objects within that painting, it could be animals or flowers or people doing different things or um, different events. That helps to have those tags, those keywords added to the artworks Um in the future for people if they're looking for certain things, it might be cats or horses or something like that, but those words aren't necessarily in the title. So you need the keyword to then be able to, to find them. So it is a form of volunteering, tagging. It's a form of micro volunteering because people can come in, they can do a few and then go away again, or they can get very involved and do a lot. Um, and it's really good fun. Uh, there's a leaderboard. You can make your uh, profile um, public. So you can then your, your name goes in the leaderboard and you can see that week who's top the top tag of that month and then all time. So that's quite a good fun thing for, for people to do. Amazing. Amazing. So uh, what are you, what, what's next for the project? Where Where will you go from here? Well, um, obviously continuing to um, uh, record public sculpture because lots of artworks are unveiled all the time. Uh, we've seen quite a few being unveiled over the last few years or a few delayed because of, of, of COVID. Um, so quite a few have been um, unveiled in the last couple of years. So that we do want to keep on top of that and updating the information when new information comes in. And that might be through our volunteers or through the public or through our own research or through Art Detective that uh, is one of our initiatives. Um, but we are looking to our next project, um, which we are uh, just pulling together the funding for. Um, so again, getting our volunteers involved in recording more public art um, and more in the shape of murals, so wall-based art. So there's still some um, sculptural murals to record, so things like tiles and concrete, that type of thing. But we'd like to record more 
painted murals um, that are out in our, our public spaces, um, street art, that type of thing. Because there's lots of amazing street art and murals around the UK. Um, there's lots of centres for that, like Glasgow, Aberdeen, um, Bristol, lots of places around the UK where you can see the most amazing paintings on the walls. Um, so we want to record those and uh Again, it's lesser known artists who might have uh, created those, sort of give them a, a platform as well. Fantastic. Thank you very much. That's a wonderful set of answers to explore your project. And uh, hopefully the uh, audience will really enjoy that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.